Perfect. We'll give it just a minute for people to start logging on. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's a great time of year. I know you guys are all busy with Giving Tuesday and end of year campaigns. So I'd love to hear in the chat if anybody has anything exciting for their campaigns this year, they're trying something new that they want to share with everyone, drop that in the chat. I'm always curious to see what new things everybody's testing out. So thank you again for joining us. I know this has got to be the busiest time of year for a lot of people. Um, so we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here and join us. Hopefully we can make it worth your while. I know Mark has a lot of great things to share with us today. Give it one more second for people to start logging on. And it looks like numbers are slowing down a little, so I'll just kick things off. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Danny Clef. I'm the Channel Marketing Coordinator over here at QGive. Uh, today, I'm joined by Mark Becker from Cathexis Partners, who's going to be sharing tips to help you get the most out of your tech in your year-end and future campaigns. As a reminder to everyone joining the webinar today, today's session is eligible for one credit of continuing education for your CFRE credentials, so make sure you're getting down, that down on your tracker for the year. We don't want you to miss out on that. A few house notes before we begin today, we are recording the session, so all registrants will be receiving an email tomorrow with a link to the session as well as some additional free resources. Please feel free to use the chat to talk with Mark and I, as well as your peers who are on the webinar today. If you have any questions, you can add those into the Q&A area and then Mark will address those as we go. Um, if you can't use that area, you can also add those into the chat and we'll make note of that there as well. Uh, before we get started, for any of you who might be unfamiliar with QGive, we are an online fundraising platform. We have solutions for all sizes of nonprofits, including year-round fundraising tools, text giving, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and auction tools. If any of those sound like they could benefit your organization, please reach out. We would love to find out how we could help you raise more. Oh, did my slides just go away? Oh, we still see them. Oh, there we go. Sorry, <laughs> I just lost my notes for a second. As a part of supporting you in your fundraising journey this year, QGive joined the Bloomerang team to help offer you an all-in-one giving platform to support all of your fundraising needs all in one location. So we're super excited. If you have any questions about that, again, please reach out to either of our teams. We're happy to chat with you. And of course, I want to introduce you to one of our wonderful partner network, one of those partners, of course, being Cathexis Partners. Cathexis helps nonprofits use technology to raise funds and engage supporters effectively and affordably. And of course, coming from Cathexis Partners, we have Mark Becker. Mark, who comes to us with, I think, over two decades of fundraising experience, a wealth of knowledge and expertise that he's so graciously willing to share with us today. So I don't want to take up too much of your time, Mark, so I'll hand things right over to you. Awesome. Thank you very much. And hello, everyone. And great to see where everybody's is joining us from. We've got everything from Colorado to uh, Central Florida, like myself, to Minnesota. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Oh, i got to wait uh, one second until you stop sharing, Danny, and then I'll take over. There we go. All right. Um, please um, make this uh, interactive as possible, right, on a Zoom call um, and uh, put your questions in the Q&A or in the chat. Let me, I'll be looking over this way occasionally, checking out um, the chat and the Q&A on this other screen. So um, don't get distracted by me not paying attention. Um, <laughs> I am paying attention, just trying to multitask. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. So um, you know, kind of when you think about end of year, you're thinking of, you know, what are you going to do to gear up for end of year fundraising, when to get started, how many communications you'll send, what channels you'll use, uh, what will your messages, what will your, your messages be, um, but what about all the tech um, you, you use or could use um, to, to help with your fundraising, right? Let's talk a bit about that. Um, and I have some specific slides here, but let's go in whatever tangents um, you want to take us um, whenever you read the description, if you had a specific 
question in mind around um, uh, end of year fundraising technology or just technology when it comes to nonprofit support in general? Like um, like Danny said, I've been doing this for a, a minute um, since before the turn of the century. Um, and uh, so definitely have some experience with uh, nonprofits. And prior to the nonprofit world, I was in um, corporate uh, IT project management in the for-profit space. So I know both sides of the street, but definitely more so with the last um, 20 plus years in the nonprofit space. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in here. So what we're gonna cover today, just kind of a high level, um, put your data segmentation tools to work, dynamic asks, um, optimize your donation form, um, use reporting tools, using AI responsibility, uh, right? You can't have a technology um, uh, session these days without talking about AI. Um, and then reviewing your tech stack. Um, so that's kind of the high level conversation uh, and topics I have, again, feel free um, to uh, drop in any other questions um, as uh, that you wanted to cover, uh, any other topics, uh, and we'll see if we have time for them. I think we should have time. Um, I try to, these days, I try to minimize the number of slides and kind of just dig in and go down rabbit holes, um, related rabbit holes, uh, where appropriate, based on uh, where the conversation goes. So let's, let's, Dig right in. So put your data segmentation tools to work. I purposely shared, uh, took a screenshot from the corporate, um, the commercial uh, email marketing segmentation strategies, um, uh, just an image, just to show you kind of how the other side is doing it. Again, I, we only support nonprofits, but when I saw this, I'm like, it really resonates as far as what nonprofits should also be thinking about when it comes to segmentation, right? Um, uh, if we go from um, left to right, uh, you know, abandoned shopping carts or forms, if you can track that, who is who is coming to your site um, and, and then um, uh, not completing a donation, if you're able to capture their email uh, address and information, or if you're able to do some type of um, uh, Google uh, follow-up and um, send them an ad, uh, targeted ad based on them coming to your site, um, use that shopping cart uh, abandonment to follow up with them um, and let them uh, suggest that they finish their donation or find out more about your mission, right? So that applies just equally as much. And um, I think there's a lot of nonprofits that are taking advantage of looking into and dealing with and addressing and following up with um, with folks that start their donation process or even come to the site, um, but don't stay long or don't complete any kind of call to action, right? Stages in the sales funnel. Obviously, you can convert that to stages in the donation or um, different steps in the ladder of your your um, your constituent uh, life cycle, right? Um, and targeting them based on are they um, a one-time donor? Are they a lapsed donor? Uh, are they uh, a volunteer? Do they attend an event? Um, uh, are they a sustained giver, right? Are they a major um, gift? Uh, are they involved in grants? Um, are they a corporate partner? Um, really segmenting that way. Do they, again, event uh, attendance? Um, education level, right? Are you ca uh, capturing that? Or do you know that from um, just the information that you might be getting from donor prospecting tools? Um, well, screening, if you're, if you're digging into that level of information, um, education level might be a factor that you might change your your audience um, uh, overall uh, that you send to, or you might just send a slightly different um, message to the people based on uh, where they're at in their life. Occupation, um, purchase history. Again, this is more, again, converting this to the nonprofit space. Um, have they donated previously? Have they donated to other similar charities? If you're able to capture that information from, again, prospecting or wealth screening tools? Have they given to similar charities? Have they given large amounts? Um, have they given, uh, what's what's their history with your organization? Um, gender may or may not uh, be of interest. Uh, in, interest as far as um, always the simplest one is if you're uh, um, a shelter, dogs versus cats, right? Um, can break that down in a variety of ways. Um, location, age, birthday, income, um, again, customer versus prospect, donor versus constituent. Have they? Do you have their email address because of some interaction? Um, 
uh, or a, a bought list, um, or have they donated or interacted, attended an event, volunteered uh, with you before, uh, et cetera? Um, and have they actually come brick and mortar versus online? Have they actually come to your um, uh, facilities for some reason, if appropriate, you know, if applicable, uh, or um, have they just engaged with you online and virtually and used your resources there? Again, uh, a lot of different ways that you can, and these are just some examples. And I, I, I purposely chose this from the for-profit uh, space just to show how, um, how we talk about it and putting these buckets doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is how you uh, take that, internalize it, and uh, determine what your buckets are for your specific uh, nonprofit and your mission, right? So moving on to dynamic asks. Um, uh, you go to a donation form, right? It has default giving levels. Say it's um, $25, $50, $100, um, 250 uh, and 1000 uh, whatever it might be, right? But um, a dynamic ask is uh, sending them to a don't either a donation form uh, with different levels based on um, uh, different segmentation, right? So if they're if they've given more in the past, or if they're a high value uh, donor, um, high income uh, donor that uh, or potential donor that could give more, maybe you'll send them simply to a different donation form that has higher levels starting at say $100 and going up from there. Alternatively, even better, uh, is using something like uh, smart amounts in, in QGive that allows based on um, specific uh, emailing out, right? And uh, sending them a link to a donation form that will change based on um, smart amounts predetermined by um, QGive um, that you can set up in your donation form so the levels are specific to what that donor has given before and based on a variety of factors. So hopefully you have a platform um, that can do things like this because it's very powerful. There's no reason to ask somebody um, for $10 as the lowest giving level when last time they gave you $100, right? Let's start at maybe $100 again um, or $75 and then go up from there. So asking for dynamic asks, there's different ways you can do it. If your platform supports it, like QGive does, um, use, use the same form and different people will see different things when they click uh, on a link in an email. Um, and then, uh, or if you're um, not using a platform as robust as that, then you can simply uh, send out, target your audience and send out different in, um, uh, donation form links based on uh, different determinations that you make. Um, question came in, what if you uh, join an organization that has an implementation, in, implemented segment, segmentation, so the data is all mixed up? How can I segment post fact? Oh, that's great, right? Um, so yeah, you have to get your data clean, right? And you have to create your segments. So um, that's all part of, hopefully it's not too late. It's October 22nd today, right? Um, so it's time to start creating your segments um, and uh, cleaning up your data. If you don't have information, if you, again, it depends on what kind of segments you want to break it down by, say it's based on um, donated last year or donated over a hundred dollars uh, in the last year or $10,000 lifetime or whatever, you know, you have, you should be able to pull that out of the system, right? Um, and if you're not asking enough information to be able to segment appropriately, this is the time to start thinking about the future and next year, right? Not everything can be done today, but start setting the stage so that you, you don't have that problem. You don't have that um, uh, uh, kind of hurdle next year. Um, you can have already pre-set up all the segments you want to use and, and it all starts by again thinking about a plan who do you want to target how do you want to target them um, to support the mission most appropriately um, and then uh, there was a question uh, in the q a um, what software enables smart amount uh, i know um, that's a specific q give um, term um, uh, so their QGIV donation forms uh, do have that those capabilities um, as far as the specific tool within there. I'd have to get back to you on that. But um, there's other uh, platforms that offer similar things as well. But I think uh, QGIV does a great version of that with their online fundraising forms. 
Good question, Zoe. All right, let's talk about optimizing your donation form. And I thought about putting all kinds of images in here. And I, I just, just gonna talk about these items, right? Um, ask the donor to cover the transaction fees. If you're not doing that, start doing that. If there's a reason you're not doing it at your organization, um, you know, a political reason or, or just a, 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 a more of a, uh, just a, a way of thinking, um, that uh, you decided not to offer that up. Um, and that's kind of a, a third rail, uh, you know, can't be um, changed. That's one thing. Um, but hopefully the technology itself isn't holding you up. Um, most platforms these days do offer the option to cover, um, uh, have the, the donor cover the transaction fees. And um, we're seeing really great um, uh, returns on that. That's an additional, you know, percentage, uh, 3%, whatever it might be on all donations that you'll probably see. Um, and then there's the question of, uh, if you ask the donors to cover the transaction fees, there's a little checkbox, um, you know, that they can either check or uncheck. Um, you know, there's, there's different surveys out, different um, reports out that say uh, different things. But basically, if you have the option to have donors cover the transaction fee and it's unchecked by default, um, less than half or about 40% I've seen or heard um, will go ahead and check that box, um, the, which is the more passive. It actually is a more active way that uh, the donor has to make the, 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 the decision to actually check the box, right? And so about 40% or so of those folks will, donors will check the box if it's unchecked to start with. Now, if it's checked by default, and you can they can uncheck it, um, then that's closer to eighty percent up. A, 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 some people said ninety percent uh, in different re, uh, different re, uh, reports, um, but um, I've seen like eighty percent pretty regularly. Um, so I would say ask the donors to have that option to have the donors cover the transaction fees and have it checked by default. Make it very uh, obvious. It, all these pla platforms these days, most platforms make it so it's very obvious. You're not trying to um, trick anybody, right? You're you're not trying to um, do anything like that. It's a, it's just a matter of having them truly have their full donation uh, go towards the mission um, by covering the transaction fee. And if you have that option uh, clearly displayed on your donation form and it's checked by default, about eighty percent of the people will leave it checked um, based on on different surveys. So. Highly recommend you do that. Uh, all those pennies and small percentages do add up, right? Uh, make sure it's very uh, easy for folks to change to or default to a monthly um, uh, donation. In a, and if you have that switch, um, uh, that toggle between one-time donation and monthly, um, the monthly amounts should be less, right? So if you're your lowest, um, and going back to my previous example, if your lowest uh, donation level is $50, 100, 200, 500, maybe on a monthly, it's more like $10, right? 25, because 10 times 12 is 120. Um, you're going to be getting much more, hopefully over the lifetime of folks um, uh, asking these questions um, to be able to uh, continue a sustained gift uh, for a lower amount every month. Um, and that really adds value. So um, actually, you know, have that option to give a monthly gift. Um, it doesn't have to be a pop-up, but just make it, make it very clear to folks to make them think about, well, you're here for a one-time gift maybe, but how about give monthly, right? Uh, make it very easy for that to happen. Um, oh, offer a range of payment options, right? Sure. Um, credit cards, right? Um, PayPal as a payment option. Um, uh, ACH, right? What about um, Venmo? What about Apple Pay? What about cryptocurrency? What about DAFs, right? Um, uh, donor advised funds. Um, at, you know, what about donating a car? So some of these things may or may not be on your actual donation form uh, process, um, and they might link out to something once you once they start going down that road, like donating a car um, or DAF does require like a third party integration normally. Um, and 
and charity is, is a kind of leader in that space where they offer up um, donor advice fund integration with uh, donation forms so it makes it really easy for the donors as well as the organizations um, to uh, basically handle all those transactions but anyways make sure you offer as many different payment options as poss possible i mentioned crypto briefly cryptocurrency um you know don't uh don't twitch too much or don't <laughs> get uh, too much of a negative reaction there because you don't have to be into cryptocurrency to accept cryptocurrency. There's there's um, different ways you can set it up and there's third party apps that make it really quick and services that make it really quick. So basically you can accept the cryptocurrency and they sell it immediately and um, uh, transfer it to um, US dollars or but your, your currency of choice, if you're in another country, um, and it gets deposited right into the bank. You're not sitting there um, trying to figure out how to become a, a crypto millionaire. You're just uh, accepting that payment option. Also consider embedding a matching gifts tool, right? There's a lot of businesses, a lot of companies that um, uh, will match up to a certain percentage uh, or dollar amount or both uh, for donations that their employees give to different nonprofits, qualifying nonprofits. And uh, it's a process to, to um, receive those monies, right? Each uh, organization, uh, each company is different, uh, slightly different on how they process those matching gifts and the qualifying amounts. Um, but there are um, matching gift tools uh, like double the donation uh, that make it um, as straightforward as possible uh, for uh, someone to see if, first of all, their their company does uh, provide a matching gift uh, uh, type of service. Um, and if so, then uh, what that process looks like, how much they can be matched for, and then what the process is for the organization um, to receive that match. So definitely making make sure you take advantage of all these different things that help streamline uh, and help you raise more money. Use your reporting tools. Um, make sure you have you know all the ways to. Uh, to be able to report on. Make sure you have a platform that gets you the reports you need. Um, uh, sometimes you'll still might find yourself doing a bit of pivot tables or what have you in, in Excel or using a data warehouse uh, and, and reporting tools to, to go really deep if you're a larger organization and, and have those options. But um, just make sure you understand your system's reporting tools and how they report because there's nothing more frustrating than two people running what they think is the same report request and getting completely different numbers because they're using a different report that focuses on a different table uh, or filters a slightly different way. So make sure you um, use your reporting tools uh, and you have your subject matter experts, your SMEs in the company that can, the organization that can really help you and make sure you're running reports the appropriate way so that when you're getting ready for board meetings, when you're setting up your segmentation, when you're creating your audiences, um, you're, you're doing it in an informed, uh, accurate way. All right, here's, I had to do a AI uh, slide. Um, so here it is. Uh, you can't talk about technology without a AI. Um, if you, this is a, where I wanna put in here is uh, check out, if you're into a, interested in AI and the, um, the appropriate use, uh, responsible use of AI, check out fundraising.ai. It's, it's an organization, um, independent organization made up of a bunch of different, uh, folks from across the nonprofit industry, uh, both vendors and nonprofit practitioners themselves that um, are, are working together to make sure that the, the industry as a whole is using AI responsibly and they have a ton of resources on their site. Again, that's fundraising.ai um, and you can kind of sign up to their their uh, um, theory and their, their agreement uh, and practice it yourself um, and commit to it. And you can also learn a lot. They just had their annual summit um, and all the videos are available for free um, to check out and see a variety of topics of using AI in, in the nonprofit space. But um, I just put this one in here just to say, hey, if nothing else, use AI 
to just review your content, right? I'm not saying AI, AI is going to do a horrible job of actually doing your final copywriting, but if you've already written up or in the process of starting a new uh, end of your campaign or any communications, run it through chat GPT or a similar tool and, um, have it run you a couple different versions of it and then take that back and uh, really review it, uh, edit it and make it your own. But uh, it, you might be surprised um, the, the great new directions. It might take um, the conversation and just help breathe in some new life into your end of your campaign. Um, and create custom images uh, that you can use AI. I have kind of sprinkled throughout this uh, presentation um, uh, a few different images created by um, uh, Dolly, which is part of uh, ChatGPT's image generator. Um, uh, and this is one of those images. Uh, I basically went in and said, create an image that represents um, end of year fundraising for a nonprofit. And uh, they're getting better. When I first started using that, a few, uh, maybe a year or so ago, um, there was, uh, it was mostly typos. Um, <laughs> and there still will be, you'll see on some of these uh, additional pictures that we have, but um, uh, it's kind of funny that these kind of make up words, but uh, the images themselves are uh, kind of useful um, and can be a great way to get images to put into your newsletters, your social media. You can even tell it to be a specific um, dimensions, uh, certain dimension, you know, pixels by X pixels. Uh, and uh, so you can kind of go out of having to use either. I mean, obviously, if you have images, uh, pictures from your own events and campaigns, uh, definitely use that. Um, but instead of just purchasing images um, from stock and, and image uh, options, um, have generate something from, from AI uh, and it'll be completely unique uh, for you and um, definitely uh, easy to generate. All right, let's talk about, kind of talked about very specific things um, that you can do, uh, little point options, but let's talk about the bigger picture, right? End of year or whatever time of year uh, is a good time to start thinking about um, what your overall tech stack looks like and what it should look like. Um, and this is also another image generated by AI and you can definitely see there's all kinds of typos in here um, and made up words. Uh, I'm not set, sure what a set burrs is, but um, over there, but uh, I guess that's for servers, but um, you get the idea. Uh, data store vogs, um, store vog five actually, data store vog five, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's what their represent, AI's representation of a nonprofit's uh, uh, tech stack uh, was, uh, so. I like it. It sounds like, um, anyways, uh, something to kind of eye candy. Um, so at the end of the year or whatever your timing is, I highly always recommend um, making sure you have a consolidated list of all the technology you use, um, you know, and that everything from your Zoom subscription to SurveyMonkey to your fundraising, um, uh, CRM, your, your email marketing tools, your social media add-ons, uh, all the free stuff, all the, all the, but most importantly, obviously all the pay items, right? What does it do, right? Um, uh, what your organization uses it for. And that's, those two items are very specific and unique, right? Um, so say you have kind of an all-in-one marketing tool um, uh, and all you're using it for is uh, one little element like SMS or email marketing, uh, uh, but you're paying all a, a larger amount, but you have a separate tool for SMS or email marketing. Um, and it, it, just because another department needed it for something and they didn't realize that it does this thing. So uh, make sure you have a list of all the technology, what it does, what your organization actually uses it for, who is the SME, the subject matter expert or experts inside of the organization, who manages the relationship with the vendor, um, and then contract details. Uh, how long is the contract? Is it a one year? Is it a month to month? Is there a contract at all? Uh, is it a three year deal, right? When is it up for renewal? And very important, 
what are those renewal stipulations? You might think, oh, I have a three-year contract and it runs out December 31st. I'll just let them know, um, you know, at the start of the month, the start of December that we're not going to renew. But then you find out, oh, it was auto renewed because you had to give them, you know, 90 days notice. So make sure you have all these things listed. And of course, then the costs as well. Uh, and anything else that's pertinent, um, put it all on a spreadsheet on a shared drive, um, uh, on your internet um, and make sure that the right people have access to it so that they can maintain it, update it, and start there um, by having that. It sounds super simple um, and probably everybody has kind of their own version of that, but maybe you do, maybe you don't, right? Um, maybe you have an IT, a huge IT department that is managing all this, but um, if you do have the larger IT departments, uh, the larger they get, the more they'll probably say, oh, this other business unit, you know, went out and got their own thing because they got approval and they just did it. And next thing, you know, they know is that they're now also using two different tools to do something like email marketing when, um, uh, they didn't even realize that they were in this commitment. So it's really important to have a, a really combined understanding of what's being used by who. And there might be very specific reasons why you need those different tools, but um, uh, just make sure that you uh, uh, are, are definitely very aware of what's out there and what's being used by everybody, right? Uh, now that once you have that, you know, make sure you review it on a regular basis, you know, regular every every uh, quarter, at least once a year, look at your tech stack and say, hey, is this is this doing it for us? Is this what we need? Is this uh, are we getting everything we need out of it? Are we paying too much? Are we paying for stuff we're not using? Right. Um, is the team really comfortable using it? And is that because the software is bad or the team needs training? Um, uh, so, and does it really support, you know, your five-year growth plan or, or whatever kind of plan you have uh, towards mission growth? Does it support the overall mission and where that you as an organization want to be in five years? Um, are you going to outgrow your technology? Um, hopefully, if you're doing things right, the answer is yes, right? Um, there's nothing, I always say, there's nothing more painful than uh, a CRM migration in your business life uh, if you're you know, really close to that process and very involved in it because it's very uh, big um, process. But you know, sometimes you just have to go through it and um, everybody's worse, uh, worst enemy is inertia. You get this so used to, oh, this is all the way we always did it. This is where we always do it. And this is the way um, I know how to do it. But doesn't mean it's the right way today or the right way to move forward, right? Um, you really want to um, uh, make sure that you are not just kind of stuck in a rut and doing things the way you've always done them. To that end, that brings us to the last big topic I wanted to cover here, which is an innovation budget. Um, you know, a lot of people out there might be rolling your eyes, but I always try to bring this up. Um, this kind of comes from the for-profit space as well, but uh, I think it's really important to see if you can, um, if you know, help get your organization to buy into the notion of an innovation budget. And that might be a specific line item in the budget that allow allows folks to try new tech, try new ideas, try a new campaign. Maybe, for example, you're not doing any peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, and because there's no budget line item for it, you can't do it next year. Maybe you can put it on the budget for two years from now. But if you had an innovation budget, that's what it could be used for this year. Um, that's one example. Um, you know, it's a matter of being able to try different things. And also uh, uh, having a culture that it's okay to try and fail. Maybe you launch a peer-to-peer -peer campaign um, and it doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't work. Okay. You know, try something else, try a different type of campaign, try, look at why that failed. Maybe it's the audience. It didn't resonate with your audience. Uh, um, maybe you didn't, weren't able to put any time and effort into really marketing it uh, and kind of helping it grow uh, appropriately. It could be a variety of reasons, but um, uh, maybe it was the technology wasn't the right fit, um, but uh, you have to try different things and um, uh, whatever that looks like. Um, 
basically turns into like an innovation budget, but being a, a, a lay, uh, available and okay and open to trying things and, and failing and then try something else. Um, there's a great quote there from Steve Jobs. Innovation is the ability to see change as an opportunity, not a threat. Um, you have to really try things um, and um, give, give new innovation uh, and know what's going out there. That's why I love going to conferences um, in, in the industry. Uh, uh, QGIS is coming up uh, here in the new year. I'm going to be there uh, in Orlando. Um, not too far from me, actually. Um, looking forward to that. And there's always some new ideas that come out of every one of these conversations. It's a chance for you to meet with your peers and, and really see uh, what other folks are doing and what's working for other folks. Um, but it, it's also sometimes a great way to share stories of what they tried and didn't work or, you know, kind of lessons from the, from the trenches. So um, get out there and, and try different things. Um, so that's my... My big stump there. Um, we have a ton of resources available on our website. Um, free resources. All it's going to cost you is your email address. Um, we will send out regular uh, emails. I think we have probably two or three at most that go out per month. Um, but hopefully, you always find them informative. We're we're sure we're we're trying to hopefully uh, get your um, support and have you as a client if we can ever be of any help. But if nothing else, we provide examples. We provide uh, free resources. We do a lot of co-marketing like this uh, particular webinar as an example. Um, but if you're looking to put together an RFP, we have a document on how to, how to generate an RFP and um, create all your requirements step-by-step. Step. Uh, here's examples of uh, tweak your donation page to boost results if you want to kind of dig into um, the details of that uh, all of this is documented uh, please check it out um, and happy to answer any other questions you may have but um, I think I've been trying to keep up with them um, there is one um, also in here in the Q&A um, sorry if I missed this but um, what's a good uh good gift a system out uh, to cover fee. Um, I'm make sure I'm, that was from an anonymous um, uh, uh, question there. Make sure I'm following that um, gift assist amount to cover the fee. Uh, if you're asking how much to make the um, uh, donor cover fee be, um, uh, anywhere, you know, 3% is kind of the default. Um, uh, it can be higher or lower. It might not actually cover all the fees um, uh, between the, if there's any platform fees and then the um, credit card fees, it might actually end up being closer to 5% or somewhere in that region. But if you even just make it 3%, that that goes a long way. Um, a lot of that is kind of sometimes configurable um, and customizable. Sometimes it's built into the the uh, platform itself. Um, but if you were asking a different question and I misunderstood, let me know. Um, uh, and let me know if there's any other question. Oh, here's one. Is there a reason we get charged on top of donor covering the fees uh, when they are monthly donor? Um, is there a reason we get charged on top of uh, donor cover fees when they are a monthly donor? Uh, I'd have to it had to look at your specific contract. I'm not sure if that's a credit card. That's probably a credit card fee, um, uh, and it might be a platform fee. But I'd have to kind of dissect that, and look at what specific Lauren, um, what specific vendor you're talking about, and platform, and what credit cards are involved. Um, there's some very specific. Uh, reasons why and how they're charged. So that's why it's really important to know what you're getting into when you sign any contract and really know what is platform fees, right? Which the vendor uh, might be adding to every transaction. And then what are the credit card fees or ACH charges by a bank, that type of thing. Um, all right, let's see. When sending communications and or appeals based on segments, do you have any strategies or suggestions on how to prioritize? I'm worried about over-segmenting and creating too many versions of the same content. Yeah, that's great. Um, a lot of it depends on how much the platform uh, can do for you, how much... So you can segment your audience and send different emails to different people, right? But then hopefully, potentially, you can also send 
one email to a larger audience, but then personalize and conditionalize the content within there with if then statements based on how well it's integrated with your, your um, CRM or your database and um, it, it, how deep uh, that information is accessible. Um, so it really comes down to how much you have time for and what your, your system supports, right? Um, but as much as you can, um, you want to make that as custom as possible so that when the individual receives the email, they feel like it's coming to them as an individual, not them as just another person in this big bucket, right? You know, so, hey, thank you so much, you know, um, Claire, for your your generous support of the organization last year. If you happen to know and feel confident in the amount, um, say your de generous donation of $100 last year, please join us again this year if you can and support again. If not, um, and if you give this much, we'll, we'll give you a back, you know, back uh, of, of house tour or whatever it might be um, or not, you know, you don't have to, it's not a transactional thing. Um, you're just asking for a donation, but if you can offer up, Hey, if you give this amount, we'll give you this, or, you know, feel free to donate if you can't give this year. Um, and thank you for so much for uh volunteering if you can't donate this year um, uh, you know thank you so much for doing this and that last year so as much as you can without just creating unfathomable amounts of work for yourself um, target that audience so someone feels like they're being heard um, but to be able to really target them you also have to learn more about them and you do that by asking having them fill out surveys and asking for them to tell you more about them or entering information into your database manually as you have these conversations one way or another you want to capture information about your constituents so that you can share that back with them and let them know that um, you as an organization know who they are and are grateful for their engagement and involvement with the, the mission um, historically and how they're gonna be involved in the future. All right, um, so I think that's all the questions. Um, if you have any others, love to chat, love this stuff. Um, always love talking about it. Uh, feel free to email or give me a call and um, you know, get out there and start fundraising everybody. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you, everyone. And thanks again, Mark. Before we go, I'm going to launch a quick poll in case you'd like Mark to reach out to you or his team um, so you can indicate that there. Mark, thank you again so much for taking the time to present to us today. And thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your busy schedules. I know this time of year is really hectic for a lot of you. Um, if we don't have any additional questions, I think we could just give everyone a few minutes back in their morning. If that sounds good. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Danny. Bye. All righty. Bye.